What's going on, Bethany family? It is your brother in Christ, Enoch Gustav, here to speak to you on this day on the, of the Daniel Fast about discernment. What is discernment? Well, it's the ability to judge well. It's perception in the absence of judgment with a view to obtaining spiritual guidance and understanding. Now, that might sound like word salad, but this text should clear things up. 1 Corinthians 2.14 says, The person without the Spirit does not accept the things that come from the Spirit of God, but considers them foolishness and cannot understand them because they are discerned only through the Spirit. Spiritual things are spiritually discerned. Now, with this Daniel fast, we are trying to discern God's will for us. We're trying to discern exactly what we're supposed to do with our lives and what path God wants us to lead. God wants to lead us, rather. And uh, we're also trying to read his word and, and apply more of it to our lives. Uh, spiritual things are spiritually discerned. As I said, let's ask God for his guidance through prayer. Dear Jesus, thank you for this day. Thank you for allowing us to be on this Daniel fast, Lord God. Thank you for allowing us to watch this. And thank you for allowing us to even be alive, Lord God. Please keep us, guide us. Give us your spirit so we can discern exactly what's going on in our lives. We can discern the path that you want for us. We can discern exactly where we should go and where we should not go. Who we should be with and who we should not be with. Please, Lord God, order our steps. In Jesus' name, amen. Of the first one of the first things I'm gonna do is preheat my oven to about 400 degrees um, for baking while I am preparing all of the other steps as you're patting dry your chickpeas you might find that there are pieces that look like this that come off of your chickpeas that's just chickpea skin you can feel free to discard those um, those won't be necessary for the recipe after my chickpeas were thoroughly dried, I transferred them into a large bowl. So now that my chickpeas are thoroughly dry, I'm going to put about what looks like about one tablespoon of extra virgin olive oil um, with my chickpeas and toss that together. Everything is now thoroughly mixed. The, all of the chickpeas are coated in the extra virgin olive oil. I am going to now um, place them on a baking sheet to get them ready to go into the oven that we had preheating. I am going to take my seasoning and just gently um, pour it all over my chickpeas. And using my spoon, I'm going to stir it all in, make sure that all of the chickpeas get a little bit of the seasoning um, we don't want an under seasoned chickpea at the end now that my chickpeas are thoroughly seasoned I'm going to place them on my lined baking sheet and just spread them out um, making sure that there aren't any chickpeas on top of each other we want all of them to have a chance to get a little bit of color so that we can have that nice crunchy snack that we're after after about 15 to 20 minutes in the oven, you'll find that the chickpeas are nice and toasted and crunchy, and they're all done. Super delicious, super crunchy, and a great topper for a salad or just for a snack. Brothers and sisters, I am privileged to share the, the Word of God with you. Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, please shed your light on our feet, on our path, through your Word. Sanctify us by your truth. Your Word is truth. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Thank you so much for the invitation to share the Word. It's always a joy to dive into the Word of God where we'll find guidelines and directions for our life. Today we're going to be considering what I would call the path 
to discernment. The path to discernment, we're going to be talking about a passage which is well known, found in the book of Romans, chapter 12, verses 1 and 2. Let me read that passage for you. Therefore, I urge you, brothers and sisters, in view of God's mercy, to offer your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and pleasing to God. This is your true and proper worship. Do not conform to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Then you will be able to test and approve what God's will is, his good, pleasing, and perfect will. Amen. So the path to discernment starts with an exhortation from Apostle Paul. He invites us. He urges us, beseeches us to present our bodies a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable to God. Not all sacrifices are acceptable to God. As a proof of that, we would say, Cain, as we read this in Genesis 4, 1 through 4, Cain chose to present a sacrifice based on his perceptions of things, based on his decisions, based on his choices. So his sacrifice was not acceptable. Abel, following the guidelines of God, obeying to the procedures that was established by God, did present a sacrifice that was acceptable to God. So as we follow that exhortation from Paul, presenting our bodies a living sacrifice, we want to make sure it is holy and acceptable to God. In a different term, I would say presenting our bodies a living sacrifice to God is self-denial. It is self-denial. When we empty ourselves of self, we are presenting our body as a living sacrifice. Actually, Jesus mentioned in Matthew chapter 16, verse 24, if anyone would come after me, let him deny himself. Let him present his body a living sacrifice to God. So, it is self-denial. We want to go, we want to walk the pathway of discernment. We should start by denying ourselves, which is presenting our body as a living sacrifice. As we deny ourselves, we extract self from ourselves, we create a void. This void is to be filled by the Holy Spirit. A promise was given to us in Luke chapter 11, verse 13. God says, I am ready to give you the Holy Spirit, if you just ask. We have the, that promise embedded in in. in Jeremiah 29, verse 13, you will search me, and you will find me if you search me with all your heart. You will ask for the Holy Spirit, and you will find, you will receive the Holy Spirit if you ask with all your heart. So, we present our bodies as a living sacrifice, meaning we deny ourselves, and that void is filled by the Holy Spirit, because we know uh, it is written in 1 Corinthians 6, 19 and 20, our body should be the temple of the Holy Spirit. When we remove self and the Holy Spirit dwells in our body, he owns this body and he, and he is in charge of this body. Those are the two conditions for a true worship to God self-denial and the infilling of the Holy Spirit.
Because how can we worship God if we are full of self? If we are full of self, we tend to worship ourselves. And sometimes people come to worship and they find themselves lifting them up, talking about themselves, praising themselves, which is not a true worship to God. Jesus, talking with the woman at the well, would say, God is looking for true worshipers that will worship in spirit and in truth. Those worshipers sh should deny themselves, be filled with the Holy Spirit. That's how their worship can be acceptable to God. And let's say, uh, what are the consequences of those choices of self-denial or, or being filled with the Holy Spirit? When someone has denied self, and that void created has been filled by the Holy Spirit, which are the two conditions of a true worship, that person will have a life which is no conformity to the world. This life which has no conformity will have that no conformity to the world. As Jesus said in First uh, John 2.15, through the, 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 the words of John, if you love the world, the love of the Father is not in you. A person that is living a life with no conformity to the world will also have new perceptions, renewing of the mind. Will not do things as the world does. Different reasoning, different words when they speak, different mindset, different attitudes different lifestyle. As Paul would mention in Colossians 3, verses 1 through 4, if, if then we are resurrected with Christ, we have to set our minds on things above. We're going to affectionate the things above. This is the life of someone that has denied self, that is filled with the Holy Spirit, is living a life which is a worship to God, that is pleasing to God, that is magnifying the greatness and the majesty of God. When you have a life that is not conformed to this world, a life which is guided with new pers perspective, renewing of mind, this is discernment of what is good and acceptable and perfect will of God. How can we reach all this? By praying without ceasing, 2 Corinthians 5, 17. We need to pray that prayer that was made by King Solomon in 1 King 3, 9. The young King Solomon would ask God, Lord, give me intelligence, give me wisdom, give me discernment. And if we live a life of prayer, asking God for self-denial, for an infilling of the Holy Spirit, a true worship of God, asking God to keep us away from that world, asking God to give us a renewing of our mind, then we'll be able to discern what is good, acceptable, and perfect will of God. Amen.